BYU Cougar Baseball is on the air as the Batcats get ready to take the field. The Rockets want deep left field. Left fielder looks up. That is a grand slam home run. This is BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now to get you ready for Cougar Baseball, here's Brent Norton. Welcome to Page Stadium here on the campus of LMU as we get ready for Game 3 after a great rendition of the Star Spangled Banner by a young lady here from Los Angeles. A good crowd on hand here. Both teams have won a game. This will be the the rubber match. The winner of this one uh, will uh, have picked up their 15th win in the conference, uh, Tuck, and that's always kind of the gold standard right there to get into that conference tournament. Yeah, you, we kind of set out at the start of the year like we need to get 15 wins. That'll get you in. But this year has been one of those weird years that maybe that might not. And uh, this game right here becomes a really, really big game. LMU will come into the ball ballgame uh, defensively with uh, uh, Cooper Ewell behind the plate, Steven Chavez, the first baseman, Alex Lambeau at second, Nick Sogard at short, Brandon Shearer at third base, Kenny Oyama in left, Dylan Hirsch in center field, and Trevin Escara. they moved him from first to right field tonight, or this afternoon. Cougars will counter with Brian Suet second base. He'll bat first. He'll be followed by Noah Hill, the catcher. Brock Hill, right fielder, bats third. Jackson Clef will be the shortstop. He'll bat fourth. King Kringlin will bat fifth and play at first base. Mitch McIntyre will bat sixth and play in left field. Ryan Sapiti gets the start again tonight, DH, and he'll bat seventh. Danny Jelilich, center fielder, bats eighth, and uh, Carson Matthews at second base for BYU. Matt Volker will be on the mound for LMU. One win, three losses, a 3.89 earned run average. And Justin Sterner, eight wins for Justin. He'll be on the hill for the Cougars. Uh, Justin has not given up a run in the last 14 innings, his last two starts against the Huskies up in Seattle and also against Pacific and Stockton last Saturday. So looking forward to a good game. Beautiful day here in Los Angeles. No wind, bright sunshine conditions. Uh, joined by Tuckett Slade and uh, looking forward to a good one. Tuck, uh, hopefully Cougars can offensively get something going a little bit more today. Yeah, just get something going early. You know, it's been kind of a weird game the last couple of days with airs kind of ruling both teams, but uh, really good going offensively. We hit some balls hard last night, just nothing to show for it. But uh, here we go. Cougars will send Brian Sue up, right-handed hitter. Brian really struggled, one for nine so far in the series. His average has dropped to 340 now on the year. And the first pitch from Volker down a little bit low, ball one. Oh, it was a call strike, very late strike call. Yeah, really late wow. call, hard to tell. Home plate umpire Michael Goble needs to get that ramped up a little bit. Here's the 0-1, that ball's hammered to right, in comes Ascara, and he's there and makes the catch for the out. Yeah, kind of been tough luck for Brian. He's hit some of the hardest balls he has all year this weekend, just right at people, and hasn't really had anything to show for it. Noah Hill will step in now for BYU. Noah, the catcher. Three for six so far in the series. As he's done a great job behind the plate and with the bat in the series. Back in that number two slot. Hill, a senior from the right side, will step in. And the first pitch from Volker is over for a strike. <laughs> I think the umpire is still trying to decide yeah. how he's going to make the strike call. Yeah, no kidding. It's like, <laughs> is he going to go up? Is he going to go side to side? What's he doing? Keeping us guessing. Here's the pitch, and that ball is hit foul down the third baseline. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that. Yeah. Where I think he might have been, he might have been daydreaming on that first strike call, but it was because it was so late. 
I like the second one much better. Absolutely. If he does a second one all game, we'll be okay. We'll have a, a chance back here. Oh, and to the count to uh, Noah Hill. Volker, one win, three losses. The sophomore out of Granite Bay, California. He'll right back to Volker on a one hopper. He'll throw to first for the out. And the Cougars quickly coming out here in the first inning of the ball game. And that will bring uh, Brock Hill to the plate. Well, it's kind of been the story of the weekend. Cougars aren't starting hot early. It takes them a couple of times through the order to kind of get going. And this team has been so good when they've scored first, especially in the first inning. Yeah. But they just haven't been able to really get on track and swing the bats like we're used to seeing. And the first pitch is down low, ball one. You got to give some of that credit to that LMU staff, but uh, I think the Cougar uh, hitters will all tell you that they're not all of them, but uh, a lot of them will tell you they're uh, they're struggling a little bit right now. Here's the one ball pitch to Hale, and that's over for a strike. Yeah, it's a long season. You start to get towards the end of the year, bodies start to wear down a little bit, but uh, we faced some good pitching the last three weeks, and uh, that's kind of some of the reason. And this LMU pitching staff is got the best team our team era in the league one one pitch hale hammers one left field that ball over oyama picks it up will keep it from going to the wall he plays such a deep left field that you really can't want get one in the gap out there on a ball just an absolute rocket by brock hale yeah the only way to get it to hit the wall is you actually have to hit it off the wall yeah. in the air because he literally plays it a step or two from the track Well, that will bring to the plate uh, Jackson Clough. And, you know, uh, talking to Coach Lillard before the game, I think this is the first left-handed starter we faced in probably five weeks yeah, since it's been SMU. been a while. Been a while. Uh, St. Mary's. Ball fouled off. I think uh, he feels confident in uh, his two lefties, McIntyre and Clough here, to adjust. Yeah, they both had big hits all year against left-handed relievers. And so they've seen enough of them. Just been a while since you've seen a starter. Runner first base, two men out, and Jackson Clough steps back in. Throw to first, and Brock Hill back in safely. Cougars in the Cougar blue top, the road gray pants tonight. In the uh, third game of this three-game set, Cougars will go on to San Diego to play San Diego State Monday night. 7 o'clock Utah, 6 o'clock here on the Pacific Coast. And then come home for next weekend, their last uh, home games against uh, San Francisco. So Cougars uh, are excited to get home, as you are, as I am. It'd be nice to get home for a few days and then back on the road for a few more weeks. Yeah, That's after, because I'm so confident we're going to get in the tournament. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, after the home stand, the Cougars go to Salt Lake for a Tuesday and then down to Santa Clara and then conference tournament, yep. NCAA regional, yep. super regional. That's the goal. World Series. Popped up down the line. You know, Yama coming over in foul territory, and he's not going to get there. Crashes up against the wall. I think the wind was kind of taking that away from yeah, him. Yeah, it looked like it. He kind of stopped and then had to take off again and hits off the sidewall in foul territory down the left field line. A break right there for Clough as he's uh, still alive at the plate. 0-2 oh, oh, the count. Huge gap in left center. Oyama's playing down that line. Clough is known to hit line drives over short. If he hits a hard enough one, he can get in the gap, and Brock can score from first. 0-2, Volker on the hill. And here's the pitch. Clough checked his swing but went around, strikes out. And the Cougars retired in the inning. No runs, one hit, no errors, one man left. We're through a half an inning. Cougars nothing. The Lions coming to the plate on your new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to the ballpark and Brent Norton. Go to the bottom of the first. Justin Sterner on the hill for the Cougars. Sterner has thrown his last 14 innings of uh, runless baseball. Yeah, Sterner has had an incredible year. He comes in eight wins, three losses, an ERA of 2.30. Sterner's eight wins is tied for fifth in the nation. Four others have nine wins. 
uh, his eight victories are tied for fo fourth most ever by a BYU sophomore. And he is a holding opponents to a 209 batting average, which is the fourth lowest. And his 2.58 ERA is the sixth lowest at BYU all time since 1970. That's awesome. We need him to have a big start today. Nick Solgard will step in against uh, Sterner in the first pitch. Fastball outside corner for a strike. This is a huge game in the realm of the season. To win this series here helps for RPI, strength the schedule. It also helps in the conference standings keep us in first place. Here's the 0-1. Sogard pops it up. Jackson Clough, shortstop there, makes the catch for the out. Nice job there by Sterner. Sogard's the guy. You keep him off the bases, and it changes them. And, and really, in reality, it's keeping the leadoff hitter off base, right? Because they just bunt him over, and they manufacture runs. So keeping him off base kind of changes what they have to do. Kenny Oyama now steps in. Oyama's had a good series, three for six with an RBI. And here is the first pitch. That's outside. That just proves there's there's room in the game for a little guy. It's, Absolutely. It's five, two, five, uh, 150 pounds, but he plays hard. He's played great defensive left field. His defense yesterday was special. Made a couple of really big-time plays. Here's the one-ball pitch fouled off and out of play. This uh, loyal team also has a kid five foot four inches tall. In this ballpark, you, you know, you're, you're going to be playing small ball most of the time, and these guys can bunt, move runners, play good defense, and help you win baseball games. Here's the 1-1 one, one to Oyama. He squares the bunt, takes a pitch up high for a ball. Uh, Brian Sue charging at third base. Well, and all these California, Southern California kids, that's what they're bred. Ever since they were little, they bunt, they run, they hit and run. That's just what the kind of baseball they play down here. 2-1 pitch, ball lined at Kringland. One hopper, Keaton's got it, and will step on the bag for the out. That's a good play right there. That was a ball running away from Keaton. Thought it might get down the line, but able to snag that and recover and get to the out at first. Kringlin at first base. Carson Matthews at second. Jackson Clough at short. Brian Sue at third. McIntyre in left, Jelich in center, Brock Hale in right, Noah Hill behind the plate, and Justin Sterner, who's retired the first two guys that he's faced, uh, is on the hill for BYU. And now uh, Brandon Shear looks like he, he kisses his bat when he's coming up to play. Yeah. As the uh, foul tips the first pitch off, Sterner had a, uh, or not Sterner, but uh, Shearer had a his first home run of the year in last night's uh, ball game in the first inning. Yeah, hit that really well. He's a guy that really tries to pull off of it and hit for power. 0-1, Sterner's pitch has popped up foul out of play, 0-2. So Justin throwing strikes here early, that's a good sign. It is, yeah. If he can get that breaking pitch going at all his way, kid is very, very tough. Great thing, too. you can hear the organ in the ballpark. That is the L.A. Dodgers organist who uh, is here at LMU today helping this team. Kind of a cool uh, thing to do. And uh, We'll forgive him for taking over our radio booth. <laughs> I like this spot, though. I, I don't mind having a partial obstructed view. It worked well last night. <laughs> One and two the count. Here's Sterner's pitch, and he went around fastball, and Shear just couldn't hold up. So Sterner retires the Lions in order. We're through one, no score. BYU and LMU on your new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin Brent Norton. Keith Kringlin into the lineup tonight, playing at first base, and he steps in. First pitch outside, ball one. You know, it's been so long since we've seen a lefty that these right-handed hitters have got to be up there going, wow, this is great. Pitch to Kringland down low for a ball. Kringland has always hit left-handers very well. He really has. He's just, he's owned them throughout his career. Two balls, no strikes to Kringland. We're in the top of the second. No score, Lions and the Cougars. Kringland pops one down the right field line. Right fielder going back a few steps, and he'll 
get there and make the catch for the out. Cougars have had one hit in the ballgame. That was in the first inning by Brock Hale, a single. That's going to bring Mitch McIntyre up. Mitch uh, will step in from the left side. Hitting 306 as he comes to the ballpark today. And he's had a good weekend. First pitch to McIntyre is a little bit low, ball one. He hit one of the hardest balls I've ever seen last night. It was so hard the first baseman couldn't even react. It went between his legs and all the way to the wall for a triple. You don't see that very often. Pitch is fouled off. I was talking to Jackson Clough, who was in the on-deck circle when it happened. He said, I had a perfect view of the first baseman on that hit. And he said he couldn't get his glove down fast enough. McIntyre has three hits in the series. One ball and one strike. Here's the pitch to McIntyre. I think that got him. Yeah, got him up on the uh, elbow pad and then came back and hit the catcher in the mask. Just a curveball that got away from Volker, so the Cougars with another base run. And that will bring uh, Sapiti to the plate. Ryan, his first collegiate hit last night. Okay, officially has a batting average. 111. Gets a couple of hits today. He'll be over 300. Yeah, he will. <laughs> You're right. Few at bats. You're right. Sapiti so only nine at bats. Now has a hit. This is his second start of the season. And the DH roll as a Sapiti out of Las Vegas steps in. Quick throw to first base to keep. Uh, McIntyre close. Mitch, six stolen bases, has not been thrown out this year. He's six for six. And Sapiti. First pitch is outside for ball one. Well, Volker's a, a guy who's a three-pitch mix guy. Fastball, slider, changeup. Likes to, likes to throw his change up to right-handed hitters, but uh, really just tries to command his fastball. Cougars 30-12 and 12 after winning last night, their 30th win of the year, LMU 27-19. and 19. Cougars are 14-6 and six in conference, LMU 14-9, and nine, so Cougars three games ahead in the loss column from the Lions. That's what makes this really big, especially yeah. for the Lions. Yeah, it really does. About a still a seven-team race because San Diego still has an outside shot. If they sweep out here and get to 16 wins, they could still get in. There's the throw to first, and again McIntyre back in safely. So after last night, uh, St. Mary's moved to 11 and 8. Gonzaga dropped to 15 and 7 on the year. Pitches outside for ball two. Also last night, San Francisco beat Pepperdine. So uh, Pepperdine now has nine losses, as does San Francisco. How many wins do those guys have? San Francisco uh, now has 13 wins, Pepperdine with 10. They're 10 and 9. Some teams have two series left. Some teams just have one. Sapiti hammers one. Deep left field. This ball is up and off the very top of the blue monster here. Boy, he's got a little feel for Ryan Sapiti's power right there. He was about a foot away from a two-run oh, shot. man, he really was. He just needed to be higher. That's a, that's a home run at any ballpark in the in the league except for this one. And You see how Oyama played that, too? He just turned around and just watched it hit the wall and, and played it perfectly. But good swing by Sapiti. That's really the type of power he can bring, and one of the reasons why Coach Littlewood likes to have him, wanted to kind of put him in the line to see what he could do. So Sapiti with a double, Cougars with runners at second and third, Jelilich up with one man out. LMU with their infield back up the middle, only to give up the run for the out here early. Danny's had a good series, three for seven, and look at him, hit 293 now. Jelilich just keeps moving that up. Checked his swing on a curveball, but went around 0-1. Tippy had a similar situation to this last night. 
and was able to hit a ball up the middle to get a run. That's all you need right here. A ball's one strike to Jelilich, sophomore out of uh, Laverne, California. There's a ball hit. Third baseman's got it. He's going to come home, and he is out at the plate. As McIntyre tried to score from third. Yep, well, the one place that you can't hit it right there is back to, is to the third baseman of the pitcher, and he did that right there, and McIntyre gets thrown out at third. Two men out. Runners now at the corners, and uh, Matthews steps in. Well, now you really need a big two-out knock here for Matthews. To have second and third and one out. But now you're in first and third, two outs with that ground out, and you've got to find a way to get at least that run right there. Carson steps in, one for three last night. Coach a little bit liked his approach last night. Moved some runners across. Had a, a bunt. There's a ball hit right at the shortstop. Sogard's got it. He throws the first a little bit high, but the first baseman goes up, makes the play. And after the double off the wall, Cougars are retired. No runs, one hit, no errors, two runners left. We're through one and a half innings. No score, BYU and LMU on your new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Trevin Escara steps in. He is the right fielder today. First pitch, a little bit low from Justin Sterner. For those of you uh, who haven't joined us, they do have the blue monster here. It's uh, 37 feet high, 130 feet long. It's uh, reminiscent of the green monster in Fenway. They even have the old-time scoreboard in and planted in that. Uh, there's a ground ball. Matthews has got it. Comes up, throws the first. Got him. Great play by Matthews. I thought Keaton maybe made a mistake going to the base. I think it might have been an easier play for him. Yeah, tough one. But uh, Matthews uh, able to go out in the shallow right field. Dole picked it up. Still had time to throw him out. Yeah, good play there by Matthews. One man out. Chavez steps in. Mascara now 0 for 10 in the series. He's the offensive firepower for this uh, LMU team. Chavez 3 for 7 with an RBI. He swung the bat well, and he's playing at first base today after uh, being the DH the first uh, two nights and the first pitch fastball over the outside corner for a strike. Chavez will be followed by Ethan Patrick. He is DHing today. And here's the 0 1, a swing and a miss. Good fastball there by Sterner. Yeah, good sink to that pitch. Normally he has a little bit of rise to his ball, but that one sunk down and away, and really good pitch. No balls, two strikes. Again. Sterner's pitch fouled off and out of play. Came back with a fastball, and that's predominantly what you'll see out of Sterner. He'll throw that curveball sometimes in a waste situation or just to mix it up a little bit, but a primarily fastball pitcher. You know, against uh, Pacific last week, at breaking ball was actually starting to really get good. Threw a ton of them for strikes. If he can get that pitch to go and then add a changeup to it, he could be really, really good. Here's the 0-2. That's up high. I think uh, same thing with McLaughlin. He's got to work on a couple of different pitches during this offseason. Always trying to get better for these young kids. A ball and a strike. Air ball and two strikes, one man out here in the second. No score. There's that curve ball, and it's fouled off. They hung that one right there. Got away with that one. Chavez out of Playa del Rey, California, junior. Big kid, 6'3", 205. Batting from the right side. Sunny, beautiful day here in Los Angeles. Not a cloud in the sky. 
And that ball's fouled off again. Cougars will bus down to San Diego on Monday for a game with San Diego State. That will be played at Tony Gwynn Stadium. There on the campus, uh, originally scheduled uh, in Lake Elsinore, but uh, with the possible threat of rain tomorrow, they've moved that game back to the college field down in San Diego. One-two pitch, a swing and a miss, strikeout. Yeah, Second good. strikeout by Sterner in the game, and uh, Ethan Patrick coming up. Yeah, really nice elevated fastball right there. His bread and butter. I know you uh, just heard about the change last night right before the game yeah, back the, to San Diego. Yeah. Kind of the hotels in L.A., you're going to travel down and back. Hopefully this team uh, uh, certainly won't use that as an excuse, but uh, leaving Monday about noon to head down to San Diego, probably two, two-and-a-half-hour trip or maybe three, three-and-a-half, depending yeah, on traffic. Yeah, it really depends on traffic. You just never know. Make sure you get down there in plenty of time. In case of traffic, have a little bit of lunch and get ready to play a game. 0-1-1, Sterner with the pitch, and that's up a little bit high for a ball. Ethan Patrick is a uh, freshman out of Pasadena. LaSalle High School, 5'8", 170-pounder. Came in as a pinch runner. Ball almost hit him inside. For ball two. Patrick kind of hanging over the plate there, and uh, Sterner really pushed him back. Justin with a 2-1 count. Here's the pitch. That's over for a strike, two and two. Yeah, painted black away right there. That's a good spot. George Page Stadium here on the campus of LMU, home of the uh, Lions. Really a nice ballpark, very scenic. Huge, uh, large trees over the outfield wall here. And a beautiful day for baseball. Ball popped up foul. 326 down the left field line here in the ballpark, 365 in the alleys. 406 to straightaway center field. And 321 down the right field line. Had one home run hit in the series. That was by Shearer, the third baseman for LMU. Sapiti came about a foot from one in the last inning for BYU. Hit up about, what, 36 feet up? Yeah. That uh, 37-foot wall in left. Ball fouled off again. Yeah, an unfortunate break right there. A little home field advantage saved them from a couple of runs. Yeah, you heard him if you hit it to left and hit it over that wall. Yeah. Again, two balls, two strikes. As Patrick hitting 211 on the year, limited at bats, steps back in. And here's Sterner's pitch, fouled off again. Patrick will be followed by Alex Lambeau and then Dylan Hirsch. This is the uh, 10th game of an 11 game road trip for the Cougars. Started this one up in uh, Seattle, won two of three. And came down to Pacific, swap three. Lost to Cal, lost the first one here. The little pop-up, easy play for McIntyre. Uh, Mitch is there and has it for the out. And the Lions are retired here in the second. No score through two on your new skin, BYU Radio Network. This is BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to the ballpark and Brent Norton. Brian Sue leads it off as we go to the third, no score. Cougars with the only two hits of the ball game. Brian flew out to right field his first time up. Brian uh, looking to pick up a couple of hits, a little looper into center field. Out goes the second baseman, makes the play for the out. Good play by uh, Lambeau. Yeah, really good play. I thought off the bat that was going to drop into center for a single, but uh, Lambeau took off and was able to get there in time. 
Noah Hill steps in for BYU. Uh, Noah grounded back to the pitcher his first time up. Cougars had runners at second and third base in the second inning with one man out after the double by Sepedi. A couple of ground outs ended that threat. And Volker's pitch, that ball is hit to left, and Oyama comes in, makes the catch. Ball hit hard by Noah, but right at Oyama. Two men out, and Brock Hale steps in. Hale singled his first time up. Brock uh, came into the game with a 340 average. And here is Volker's first pitch. It's a little bit low ball one. You know, compared to the two starters the first two games, I would say Volker's definitely gettable. Much more oh, gettable. Oh, absolutely. Than the other two yeah, 84, 87, little spinner up there. Seems like the guys are seeing him well. Yeah, coach said he didn't have a great change. That's what you look for in a guy with not the great velocity. Pitches over for a strike one and one. Well, and if he's missing, he's missing over the plate, which is the difference between the first two starters who are missing away or swing and miss type misses. Here's the 1-1 one, one to Brock. He fouls that one off, 1-2. One and two. Cougars would love to get out of Los Angeles with their 15th win in the conference and then go home and play San Francisco and then Santa Clara to finish up the league. That will be uh, the Santa Clara series will be a road contest. Cougar uh, schedule this year was really slanted. Most of the home games early in the year in March when the weather was uh, iffy at best there in Provo. <laughs> yeah, it was not a fun early homestand. I think it kind of tipped it upside down as the Gonzaga came to Provo instead of Provo or BYU going up to Spokane, which was supposed to be the way it was, but Spokane okay, had so much snow, they, they moved it down as uh, Brock Hale swings and misses at a fastball. Cougars retired in order again here. Lawrence hits her errors. We're through two and a half. No score. BYU and LMU on your new skin, BYU Radio Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin Brent Norton. Alex Lambeau will lead it off for LMU. Sterner's face six. He's a retired six with a pair of strikeouts through the first two innings. Lambeau, four for seven. Bottom part of this order has really done a good job for uh, Jason Gill, head coach. And the first pitch over for a call strike. Yeah, Dylan really, Hirsch and then Cooper Ewell. Yeah, they've been getting on base. These are the guys that have been doing the damage this weekend. Yeah, Lambeau with four hits. Uh, Hirsch up next has three hits. These guys both hitting in the low 200s. Pitches down low for a ball. So one and one the count. Uh, Sterner. Looking in. And the pitch, and that ball's fouled off. As we mentioned, uh, Peter Rule, the... Organist for the Dodgers. They've got him set up out here in the ballpark tonight, and he's playing the organ music between innings and between uh, batters. So that's a that's a nice touch. They do a good job here with promotions. They really do. It's a good atmosphere. Good crowd. Good contingent of Cougar fans here today. Their visitor stands com- almost completely full. As I was sitting outside near the gate, man, it was just a steady stream of blue coming in to the ballpark about a half an hour before game time. Yeah, it's awesome. We also have a bunch of guys that are from this area, so uh, a bunch of family coming out to watch and makes it fun. Bottom of the third, no score, BYU and LMU, and here is the 1-2 pitch from Sterner. Checked his swing, but easily went around for another strikeout by Sterner. Sterner just got that velocity going, and the line just unable to hold up on that pitch is about chin high. Yeah, and that's, that's twice now he's had that same strikeout where guys try to lay off that pitch. It's about 92 miles an hour and just can't hold back. One man out, Dylan Hurst steps in, center fielder. Hurst will bat from the right side, as we mentioned, three for four in the series up to this point. 
does have an RBI. And here is the pitch from Justin Sterner. It's up a little bit high. Sterner out of Laguna Niguel, just a little bit south of here. Got a brother, six foot six inches tall, that will be pitching next year for the Cougars. Had Tommy John surgery. Didn't have quite the velocity, but a little better curveball on the other Sterner young man. And looking forward to getting him. Yeah, he has a plus year. plus plus breaking ball, and you know it's, it's his fastball. Like you said, isn't as much as Justin's, but it's still up there, eighty eight ninety. And uh, yeah, he's about ready to be healthy. Probably about a month away from being able to throw off a mound, get a little summer ball action, and be ready for next year. One one pitch up a little bit high, ball two. We were hoping he'd be back. You know, be able to pitch, you know, maybe in the second half this year, but uh, the arm just wasn't responding. Everyone responds a little bit different. Well, Ryan Brady, Cougar right hander out of Park City, went through the same thing, and he's kind of battled that same thing a little bit this year. Here's a 2 1 pitch, a swing and a miss to Hershey, and the count evens up 2 2. It's amazing. You get a little. A little more of that velocity, maybe go from high 80s to low 90s, the, the difference it makes. That yeah, makes a huge difference. Sterner, who always works from the stretch, 2 2 pitch, up a little bit high, ball three. No score. Bottom of the third, Cougars, the only two hits in the ball game. And Sterner pitches fouled off. Well, the biggest difference with velocity, Brent, is that when you throw low to mid-90s, you can miss more and get away with it. When you're below 90, you have to pitch more. And those guys that are the 90-95 that can pitch, then they become professional, you know? So that's how that kind of goes. You get paid. Paid yeah. to play. Yep. Three and two again. Here's Sterner's pitch. A little bit low, ball four. First base runner by LMU. And Cooper Yule, the Lion catcher, will step in. Cooper Yule's got one hit in the series and seven at bats. He is hitting 216 as he steps in with uh, 22 RBIs. Yule out of Mission Viejo. California. Again, just a little bit south of here. One man out, one man on. Hirsch, very good speed. He's uh, stolen 10 bases in 11 attempts this year. Yeah, great speed with a combination of Justin Sterner not being the quickest guy to the plate. He's our slowest starting pitcher to the plate, which then gives Hirsch, you know, a head start to be able to steal that bag a little easier. Pitch to Yule is fouled off. Cougar, San Diego State, Monday night from San Diego. Six o'clock start here in the Pacific Coast, seven o'clock back in Utah. We'll have those g- that game for you here on uh, your new skin BYU radio network. And here's the 0 1 runner faked. Like he was going to go stopped, and I think first curveball we've seen from a Sterner that's been thrown for a strike. Yeah, zero and two. It was a really good pitch. Wonder if that little fake still caught Cooper off guard yeah. there, because he definitely wasn't going to swing at that pitch. Zero and two, and here is Sterner's pitch, just missed outside. That's a good miss there. Tried to stretch there. See if you can get a swing and miss. Chase. Just off the plate. One ball and two strikes. Nick Sogard is on deck, the leadoff hitter. As we play the bottom of the third here. And here is the pitch. Ball hit out toward... uh, Matthews, he's got it on to second for one. The return to first. Cougars turn two. Four, six, three. Double play. 
No runs, hits, or errors. Nobody left. We're through three. No score. LMU and BYU on your new skin, BYU Sports Network.